when it came to the point in time for her to start, we were talking about school and both of us were a little disillusioned by public school anyways. And we knew from fairly early on that she was very driven by art and tactile. She was very animated. Good morning. We just realized that she would probably prosper if something was different than the typical public school. For me, of course, I was concerned because, you know, I didn't want her to just color well. Good morning, guys. Have a great day. Willow had significant challenges with discipline, enrollment, white flight. It was perceived as an undesirable school to be in. When we first looked at artful learning as a model that we wanted to adopt at our school, I was very excited. I thought this is going to be so great for kids. But what I didn't realize was how much it would affect my teachers, how amazing it would be. And I have seen a huge transformation. Fast forward eight years, there are waiting lines for students to be enrolled. They've doubled their enrollment. They've doubled the size of their staff. They've become a leadership and legacy school that other potential schools come and visit. They visit Willow to see what artful learning looks like. Leonard Bernstein's vision was really to incorporate the arts into everyday experiences for learners, both teachers and students. Today, I'm looking for collaboration. 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 Working together. together. OK, so I'm going to be looking for teams who are helping each other, working together to write their paragraph. Take your strips and go down there. Get your clipboards. Take your strips. Go to the rug. The dairy cow. Yeah, do you remember where to find that information? Where would you find it? It's right up there, the purple category. Okay. Okay, get your sentence strips. Take your pen and get your clipboards. Each grade level took all of their standards and all the things that they knew that they had to teach, then they mapped them out. We created a curriculum map. We looked for concepts that would connect our science, our social studies, our math, our language arts, to tie all of that content together into one unit so that the science is going to fit to the language arts or the social studies maybe even connects to the science and how can I put math in there. Artful learning is a concept-based interdisciplinary approach. So you can learn thematically if you'd like, but a concept is something that you'll use the rest of your life. Relationships, systems, balance, transformation, legacy. Once we found those concepts, we looked for masterworks that reflected that concept, and artists that sparked our imaginations as educators so we could bring that excitement into the classroom. Whether it's a musical artist, a dramatic artist, a multimedia artist, they think out of the box, and that's why their master works are significant in our culture. Allowing arts to come into that experience makes sense for mathematical, ratio, proportion. If you're writing, what are you writing about? Unless you've had an emotional experience and an attachment to what it is that you're learning, you can't write something compelling. So each unit of study starts with a masterwork that brings kids in, excites them, it launches that whole unit of study. And then teachers develop inquiry centers so students are able to really think about their own learning and inquire and um, come up with projects. Make sure those instruments are to the side. Yeah, right in there. Our unit concept is transformation. And the significant question is how does transformation alter our world? And so like the word, the, the meaning is a dramatic um, change in form or appearance. 
And so, as you can see, this is the story of Cinderella. So her dress just got all messed up. And so her fairy godmother changed her into like a brand new dress and that's a change in appearance. Our masterwork experience is Hoedown from Rodeo by Aaron Copeland. And the C here in field chart is right here. C is like what the music makes you see and here's like the instruments and stuff and feels what the music makes you feel. It shows a uh, transformation in like the dynamics and pitch and it was like happy, then like sad, and then like mellow and cheerful. And, and this is yeah. the Inquiry Center One. It's about the gold rush and how the gold rush transforms California economy. I'm working in the Inquiry Center Two, transformational people, and that's what we're gonna be learning about. The people that I'm talking about are Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. They changed people's life in a whole bunch of different ways. And right here, you can see how we wrote words that we thought described Martin Luther King Jr. right here. We're learning about transformational people, and we're learning about Walt Disney, and how the first created character that they made was uh, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, where they combined it live action with animation. It was something that few movies had ever done. Everything every day connects back to this concept, even when we're talking about numbers and mathematics and we're talking about concepts in science. I always take it back to our concept of transformation. So nearly everything we do throughout the day can be woven into the Artful Learning Unit and our Artful Learning Unit reaches out into everything we do as well. And then right here, the Oh Susanna parody by um, Stephen Foster. And, and he's like, I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. And then O oh, California by J. Nicholas in 1848. He made his own song about California. He says, I come from Salem City with my um, washball on my knee, which is talking about he's going to go find the gold. And we wrote our own song about like a whole parody off of um, O oh, Susanna. Part of the model is this idea of original creation. So we're pushing the students to create something that has never been created before. Louder. It's so powerful to have the kids actually create their own music because that, that's the true test of, you can see, have they synthesized the information. Instead of just regurgitating something, they take it to the next level and they are actually creating from that information. And that is a really exciting. Instead of just reading about the gold rush, we are rewriting a song and students are playing um, collaboratively. They're performing the song, they're rewriting the lyrics. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's more than just, do you understand what you just read? When it's all connected around this big concept, not only does it help teachers deliver it in a way that makes more sense, but it also helps kids make meaning out of their learning. And they don't see things as separate. They're able to make connections in their mind. The learning goes deeper, um, the students are engaged, and it's just um, seeing those lights go on, those aha moments happen. It's not like learning an individual single subject in a boring manner. Instead, it's engaging and it's interesting and they want to learn more about whatever topic it is that they're learning. Feeling emotion and emotional connection to learning is what is powerful about artful learning. You'll see with any artful learning student and teacher, there is an emotional connection. What do you think the audience is going to do when we finish the song? Laugh, clap. They are and if you have an emotional connection to the learning, it's ingrained and you move into metaphor and something very powerful comes from that. How do we acknowledge and say thank you to the audience? We bow, so one, two, three. And we're really engaged and excited about it. That's what we remember. And when we love something, it stays with us in sort of a different way than just tiny pieces of knowledge. Do you need help with your sentence? Turn right there to the pictorial and you can pull those words right off. Passivity isn't what makes a learner. A learner is engaged and hands-on and digging into their learning. And little kids can do that too. Okay. Okay. 
Hey, why are you putting stuff in? Traditionally, we might have learned for a test. So we learned, we studied, we took the test, we passed, and then you move on. But I think that their learning and their experiences are different in that they're learning and then it turns into that emotional experience and they can really talk about it. They, they aren't just ready to perform on a test. They have internalized it in a much different way. The dairy cows eat hay and grass. We get yogurt from a dairy cow. So you worked hard on that sentence. For these reasons, dairy cows are amazing farm animals. So listen, later today or tomorrow, we're going to revise your paragraph. We need to have standardization. We need to have those things. But teaching is such an art. It is such a craft that comes from the heart. And when you regiment everything and you say you must be on page two of the teacher's guide and now you must be on page four, and now that takes away that passion. The education system as it is is strict and it's just a market to achieve a workforce. That's really all it is. It's not about being original or about being creative. It's almost like a jail to me, you know, being here at a traditional school. And really, it's just creating drones. It's not about education anymore, it's just about the grade and like, oh, I have to do this for the grade, not because I'm trying to learn. You're forced to have to try and achieve these goals that they set for you, even though there's no good reason that the goals exist and the goals are sometimes just arduous tasks. It's more of a, you know, get, get the work done or you're gonna fail the class and you're like, oh, you know, you're getting really anxious. That's not all we are. We are not just an A, B, or a C, or like, the grade doesn't define us. Uh, all the time that teachers dedicate, all the time that I dedicate in my classes, it seems like it's all going to a waste because the things that I'm learning just aren't important. We're forgetting about our mental health and not, we're just forgetting about that and we should be there for one another and supporting each other. We need to focus on growing relationships with people and being kind to people. We really do need a role model in our life or someone there to be there and help us out and especially doing that with love and not just having a determined mind just about work or how our world has come to. When education was in its heyday of development, it was in an industrialized era. So we knew what we had to prepare a worker for. I think that we are preparing children for jobs that we don't even know exist yet, or probably jobs that don't exist yet. And so we do want our kids to be flexible thinkers. We want them to be able to adapt. The Partnership for 21st Century Learning identified key components in education that students had to be facile with creativity, communication, critical thinking, collaboration. And the world is very connected, so much more connected than it's ever been. Um, and the possibilities are endless. They're going to be the future leaders of our communities, but we have to engage them in a way that allow those skills to blossom. Our kids are going to need to be able to look at the world and have a lot more control, I think, of their future. Are you okay there, Rosa Parks people? Think about that person that you agreed to collaborate about. Why is that person demonstrating activism? If you need to turn and take a look at that person, that's great. And then freeze yourself back. With your group, please have a discussion talking about what they think their role is and why it's important. No. So, Papa, you, you can't take me because... Interdependence is a concept that we talk a lot about and our second graders begin to understand we're all interdependent. So helping them to understand how one thing, one person affects another is a huge life kind of lesson. 
People like farm workers should be paid more so they can take care of their health, their animals, and farms. If they don't get paid enough, they won't be able to pay their rent. Their health is important. You might get homeless. Get I agree. Uh, and if you have children, you won't be able to pay for them. I'm trying to help people. Yeah, I like that one. So when we approach our learning more conceptually, it makes sense for the student on why they have to learn this in mathematics and why it's important in English language arts. Not just to fulfill a requirement, but really to prepare you as a global citizen for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay, and then Emma, what'd you write? Um, because, because we're trying to make too much money. No, we're trying to make money. Trying to I make money. Trying to make because money. I thought it was all about like helping, but making money. Like helping people and making money. Like making money. They're thinking very creatively in how a solution can be achieved and aren't afraid to take risks. And to look at themselves as not how smart am I, but how am I smart. We want them to realize that solving problems is a way of life. And I think that we would much rather have grown-ups, adults, who can think clearly and communicate their thinking and problem solve than, you know, know all the capitals of the states. A lot of these arts-based skills and strategies help students build that perseverance and that ability to really look deeper at things and even look at the most simplistic activities and really, really dive into them and go, why am I making those choices? Why am I doing that in that way? And with math nowadays, students need to be able to know how to approach problems in so many different ways. We're gonna stop at our seats. They're being asked to look at it from different directions and to apply the skills that they know in order to answer those problems. And so a lot of these skills that we're learning through our arts-based skills and strategies and through our units are building that up in those students to really be able to dig deeply and work hard with those types of problems. What happened if you got behind? What did you need to do if you got behind? Tell your neighbor one thing. Um, who wants to share something? I heard some... He fell behind, he would just go faster. And then go back on the beat? Yeah. Okay. Like in the middle of when we were counting, they switched, and then you started counting. So then we all got together, and then when we switched, we all did it together. Do you have to move, like, very fast? Um, I jumped on and then I was like kind of late so uh, like I heard the music like saying like five or four and I went on that number. Okay, so you listened to the music cues. And I was going ahead and when I was looking at his, I would catch up with him. Oh, okay, so you used the people around you who were doing it to help you. And artful learning propels thinkers to have different outcomes or that there are a myriad of different solutions to a challenge or a problem. And by using an interdisciplinary approach that is creative and innovative in its design allows for differentiated ideas, experiences, and outcomes. And I've seen children who have not produced much work there for whatever reason, but when they began to be engaged in an art for learning unit, all of a the sudden, they became more passionate about what they wanted to write about, what they had to say, what was important to them. So I, f I also feel that it really gives students a voice. The key to artful learning is that we look at multiple intelligences and we look at differentiation the visual learner, the auditory learner, the kinesthetic, the tactile learner. And artful learning teachers are trained to build units of study that engage every type of learner. Because not all kids learn the same. Yeah. And that's the whole point of this is, you know, you got to try to, you got to read your kid too. I think, you know, it's very important The, you know, you don't just send your kids to school and say, okay, 
educate them. We all have different learning capabilities, and we're all going to not learn the same way, and that's going to be okay, because we can learn together and just grow and still become smart, intelligent people. Everyone is different. Everyone has their own things that make them happy, things that make them feel powerful. It helps multiple different types of learners to be able to access that material and to be successful in it in their own way, a way that speaks to them. Those who still want to do the research and the books, um, those who learn best by listening, those who learn best by standing up and physicalizing it and doing. You open up one part of the brain, it's exercising another part of the brain. And so these kids are um, some kids who've been struggling academically, for the first time they're feeling confident in one area. The more confidence you build there, it'll spill into other areas. And every learner is engaged in a way that is customized to how they learn so they can have an experience where they become a leader in a classroom where typically they would not be. Um, maybe right and maybe like at the bottom, they get turned to shovel and then... But maybe like Caesar yeah. Chavez, he's Wait. driving the car back. No, no Andy is. Andy is. Um, Cause on Friday, we're gonna try to go through this multiple times so that we're ready for a performance. And since it's our first time in here, do you think it's gonna take us a little while to get used to it? Yeah, yeah so we're just gonna have to be patient um, with each other and with ourselves and, and with the space. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I think what it does for our exceptionally bright students is it pushes them. It pushes them to go even further. Because it's inquiry-based, it's open-ended, there's an opportunity for them to think as big as they want to think, be as creative as they want to be. And I have to say, as a, as a teacher, I learn from them every day. Um, and I, it's, my job is always different, it's always creative, um, and I'm, I'm challenged in also challenging them. So, you know, you do sit down and you find the best fit for your class. So we do that almost weekly to make sure that what we're doing meets their needs. Look at what we have in our classroom and make it meaningful and important to those kids. Um, you may be doing something completely different next year within the same subject and, you know, but it, the framework really works well for granting us a lot of artistic freedom, if you will allow the pun. And so that's where I've seen that shift for my teachers, is to be able to have a lot of voice, a lot of um, professional credibility in being able to design how they deliver those standards. Standards that are the same as at another school or in another area, but not a standardization that feels crippling. When I first found out we were going to be an artful learning school, um, I, I started looking for another job. I, and it wasn't didn't have anything to do with the program. It just had to do with change. Change is hard. Change is challenging. And I, I was stressed about it. Teachers are always leery when something is presented to them to say, this is just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. And I'm just going to wait this out. It's going to be cyclical, and it'll go away. And I'll keep doing what I know is best for students. It was a challenge in the beginning, and it was a little frightening just because it's something new and something really different. Um, but I think what's really helped tremendously was the amount of training that we've had. The training has put us in the position of a child. So we've been like students in the classroom. As it's been modeled, we've been walked through all these beautiful processes. So as we've had the real life experience, it's so much easier to understand what a child is feeling like in the classroom. And you kind of treasure those, those feel good moments that I've had through the training. I know my students are sharing those same feel good moments. We've had educators 10, 20, 30 years during our professional development come up to us and say, I thought I knew what I was doing, 
and I'm actually embarrassed now that I can see what I can be doing in the classroom is totally changing the way I'm thinking. And it does, it invigorates, it empowers the teachers, but it also makes them look critically at their own practice. Can you find red in your palette? And do you remember how to make a heart or do you want me to tell you how? I'm putting it right on top of my red. And let's see what happens to my red. Look at mine. Wow, what do you think is happening with the white and the red together? Different color. Shall we try our pink? But I think if we are engaged in that change, if we're asking questions as adults, as parents, as teachers, as educators, Shall talking about what works, what, what's not working, how do we how do we tweak it a little bit, I think that that's the only way to make something happen. If we're to sit back and, and wait for the perfect thing to come along, that's not gonna happen. I think approximating that, moving towards something better, we have to make incremental change in order to get to big change. Um, I think we also have to have a vision. Where, where are we going? Uh, what could it look like? That big idea of think big, think, think about something amazing, think about something exciting. What do you want for your children? It also has a lot to do that we include the household, that it's not just school is uh, its own world and we don't know anything about it and whatever happens at school is one thing and whatever happens at home is another. I think to develop that community, to create inclusion, has to also include the household. No, pero digo, si aquí están, ¿ustedes saben hablar inglés? ¿Usted, por ejemplo? Uh, yo lo entiendo, pero no me he atrevido a hablar. Okay. Porque Esa es la, la, la palabra indicada, no me he atrevido. No, no me he atrevido. Es There's all sorts of people, from winery owners to people who work in the field. But um, as far as what Pam goes, is she provides programs and events to bring everyone together. And it's there's no social ladder, it's just Willow Elementary as a whole. Just because we've always done something one way, doesn't make that the right way. It doesn't make it the best way. It certainly doesn't make it the only way. And I would always compel parents to ask their children, not what you learned, but how did you learn today? I mean, look at me. I'm excelling. And I don't think I would be excelling if I hadn't have gone to an arts and straight integration school. I actually was given the opportunity to jump up a whole entire grade in math, and I'm in the advanced version for that. Like, that was a really good experience, and that was a really good time where I grew and I really um, discovered who I could be, and I knew that I didn't have limited options, but if I wanted to do something, I could do it. Our hope is that the approach, because it is art-based and because of the group base and the a lot of presentations that they have to do, like those kinds of things, we're hoping is gonna make them a more well-rounded person to succeed in the future. I wouldn't be the person I am today without that school, and I wouldn't have the mindset or not necessarily free-spiritedness, but I feel like it is that where you were just, you just feel differently about the world, but in a good way. If learning can become part of life versus something that you just do at school, that's what we want to excite our children about. We want them to become engaged learners. We want them to understand that working together, collaborating with other people, thinking creatively, thinking differently, is part of life. What we are looking to do is really be progressive. Do we need a six or seven period day? Or should we be looking at the academic day differently? Should we be allowing more time for students to spend in conceptual learning and empower them to take those deep dives, to investigate and try new hypotheses? If we keep the older system, I think we're gonna have those older outcomes. If we are going to be progressive in our thinking and using arts as the pathway, to ignite all the curriculum, then yes, we are going to change the future. It's about thinking differently. We don't have to throw it all away and start over again, but I think that we do need to think differently about what our students need.